Hey, what's going on? Welcome in. I hope you're doing well today. It's so bright and sunny out where I am. We just had a snowstorm too, so it's kind of awesome because it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's, it feels all comfy, cozy in the house. And then it's like super beautiful to look at and no one's out on the road. So I hope you're kind of, I hope you're having one of those kind of Sundays. Let's look at the energy for today. Let's see what's going on. You know, there is some stuff happening is what I'm seeing. Um, you know, depending on what your plans are, what your schedule is for today, be conscious and mindful about, um, you know, how we're letting people, places, and things play off of our emotions. That was one of the messages I was hearing before I was doing this reading. We really have to stand strong and confident in our energy, in our belief, what we're picking up intuitively, which is way easier said than done, you know? I think we're, I think questioning ourselves or fears, anxieties, false beliefs definitely come into play and, you know, hence, <laughs> make us doubt what we're sensing or feeling or people can play on our emotions and it, you know, <laughs> we get a little too empathetic, I should say. So I always love starting these readings out with clearing the energy, just kind of putting in good vibes, good intention. Feel free to follow along if you have a smudge bundle on hand. Um, you can totally receive what I'm doing on my end or skip ahead if it's not your vibe. All right. I bless you with pure love and light, pure source energy, pure love and grace. I release anything. Ooh, I just hit the selenite around us that does not serve our highest and best for the messages. I feel like my space was fairly <laughs> well cleaned out. I've been doing a lot of energy clearing, a lot of just kind of cleansing my home, my space. That has been a message that's been coming up for us. Ooh, the emperor at the, empress, excuse me, at the bottom of the deck and then seven of swords, which is also a card that's been popping up for us on the regular. It goes back to that sneaky energy I was talking about in the very beginning. When people, places, and things are trying to push their own agenda, it's not to throw shade at those situations or those people, right? A lot of this is about our awareness and our ability to be aware. Awareness gives us better understanding of how we want to live, and sometimes it is just making a choice. I was reading this morning in my own quiet time, <laughs> there, like... Every individual has credits and deficits. That's just like the nature of the beast. It doesn't make it good, bad, right, or wrong. It doesn't make it evil necessarily. I think there's lower vibrations, right? People who, um, you know, unfortunately have a very blind, very limited awareness. And so then they operate out of the primitive or make more base functionings. And, you know, I mean, I think we like as humans to point the finger right, wrong. <laughs> it's just, you know, not always that way. Ooh, yeah, being gentle is what first comes out for us today. Being gentle with ourselves, also being gentle with the energies around us. You know, it kind of goes back to when we're dealing with more difficult things. And we are seeing that pop up. There's like a lot of activity. It's not the worst. It's not these big bad tower moments. Hopefully for you. Hopefully it's not feeling too heavy. I feel like this is stuff we're all used to dealing with. With the mon... The mon... <laughs> My words are not coming out very fluidly today. With the moon square to Uranus, it really talks about like we're having a hard time fighting for ourselves or fighting for the belief that might not be the most popular right now. And with Mercury square to Neptune, it can make it easy to buy into something that sounds really effing good, right? But that's where it's so important to continue to connect with those spidey senses. Um, sense, <laughs> senses, I don't know, sorry. Just forgive me if I... <laughs> mispronounced today apparently it's the vibe um however the in like 
Like I was saying, intuition is really going to be on our side, A, when we're gentle with ourselves, right? When we stand in our power, step in our power. Thankfully, Sunday is ruled by the, day, the sun. Uh, it doesn't matter when you're watching these uh, messages. They're always timeless. As long as it resonates, definitely pick up that vibe. If it doesn't, just don't even, don't even worry about it, right, is what we say. But the sun really is our empowerment, and it's in our empowerment through our uh, solar plexus and our heart chakra, meaning what we long for, what we desire, what we fantasize, what we're passionate about, etc. That is the energy that is going to empower us to birth that into this world. Not always easy, right? Especially when we're dealing with more difficult, yep, primordial people, places, and things. 555 was on the clock as I pulled this up. So it goes back to those base instincts that we all have, right? It's survival of the fittest, Darwinism. It is, you know, our ancestral lineage, how we've learned to, to fight and survive for our own well-being. Obviously, we're in modern day, but modern day can be just as much fight and flight, right? We're all stressed out. There's a billion things going on. And what these readings or wellness, taking care of our mind, body, soul helps us to do is to be strong in order to navigate and combat whatever comes our way. And we're dealing with things that may feel evil. They may feel low vibey. They may feel like, you know, your heart is breaking because it's, you know, heavy energy is just that. It's heavy. It brings out a lot of disconnect emotion, pain, suffering, but what comes out of that is this amazing rebirth. Sometimes we have to go back to the basics, the base instincts in order to rewrite, replan, rework from there. And I think usually when we get pulled down into these deeper, darker places, if you've been doing a lot of shadow work or if your life has just been a mess lately, maybe all these things are happening that feel so out of your control. Remember that when you're when you come out of it, you know, just simplify, go back down to what you need to survive from one day to the next. And as we do that, we're slowly opening up and rebuilding to this new new beautiful beginning. And I like the way that they depict it in this card. He's holding that book, right? And to me, it's like rewriting the story and not being afraid to do that. Yeah, but we have to get those myths out of the way. The false beliefs, the insecurities, the places that, um, I don't know, we've bought into lies, right? With that Seven of Swords energy that we saw at the very beginning, there's either people in your environment um, that, you know, are lying to you, that are kind to create false beliefs, make you think or feel a certain way that really isn't necessarily true. Um, this is also beliefs that we have held on to throughout the years that no longer serve us, that aren't really actually in alignment with what we're creating, what we're rebirthing. I'm going to pull one clarification card on this myth energy. Okay, yeah. So, okay, interesting. Conflict. Let me do one more. Okay. So, this is that, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Oftentimes, we believe lies when there is conflict, when there is discord, when things are very ego-based. It's really hard not to get backed into a corner when, when we are dealing with people who don't really care, right? Who will be ruthless to our face or lie to our face or, you know, try to control, manipulate our emotions, our feelings, etc. I feel like you need to be more aware of this, especially in your emotional energetic body with this water element coming up for you. Um, here's the thing. I think that like what I'm hearing for some of you is you get labeled. People like to say a certain thing about you or uh, make you out to look a certain way. 
And I feel like you've bought into this. I feel like this is a belief that maybe you've been struggling with for a while, or it's many beliefs, right? It's something that is blocking your empowerment moving forward. We're still wrapping up Capricorn season right now. So that is the value of putting in the work and overcoming the things that have been limiting us. And here's the thing, when people create conflict, it's really hard to see things clearly, right? Like it's it's that that value of getting distracted, like being so distracted by the conflict that you're not really resolving the issue at hand. And I feel like, you know, because this doesn't feel as much like your energy will clarify with the tarot and see what comes up, but this feels to me that like it's conflict that's been created in your environment for that purpose, for that purpose of distraction to get you to buy into that false belief. And I do feel right now you are in this space of truly letting go and releasing. Um, I think that it's, again, there is always that underlying theme right now that it's not the most comfortable. But the more we let go, the more we, we release Pluto harmoniously expected to the vertex point and new um, <laughs> neutron. <laughs> I don't even know. Neptune <laughs> in conjunct with the vertex point. That actually really helps, um, you know, the more we listen to our instincts and honor those things and release and let go, the more uh, our path is going to move forward. It's going to come to head, especially with the people that like, maybe there's not a lot of things being exchanged right now. Maybe it's more on the energetic plane or you're just in a time of no communication. I think that's challenging, right? Because it leaves a lot to the imagination. But that's where spirit's really asking you to stay grounded in yourself. It's not about how you look. The other thing about when there's like egoic conflict is it can be really shaming. It can be incredibly embarrassing. Like I was talking about earlier, maybe someone is trying to make you feel stupid, you know, or look bad, etc. That's the place that we can't really plug into. Like we can't put energy, thought energy. Um, you know, I think it's good to like get it out, cry, release, talk to a close friend, confidant, someone you trust for sure. But don't sit in that energy. When we sit in that energy of, oh, they're making me look so bad or this person's going to think that or whatever it is, it actually, again, keeps d us distracted. And this energy that has been surrounding us as of late, it is one of manipulation, of trying to have the upper hand be, you know, the puppeteer being the person who <laughs> moves the chess pieces is what I was going to say. So... Yes, messages, communication, eight of wands, things speeding up. We're seeing that even energetically, just as um, the planets have been going direct. We only have Uranus in retrograde right now. So that goes direct at the end of the month, the 27th. And then we don't have anything retrograde until April, which is so nice because it gives us a little breath of fresh air. <laughs> We don't have to work on things. I mean, we do, but like, you know, it's in a different way. It's when we actually are starting to see the results, the fruits of our labor. So messages, communication coming in today, learning growth. It's taking a lot of strength. I Maybe this might even be something that you hear, something that someone says to you, um, the way things are communicated or how things come across. Uh, you know, I feel like it's rubbing you the wrong way is what I'm hearing. There's something about this that's either a little bit triggering or it just kind of throws you off course. And basically it's saying that you have to remain strong. You can't, oh, there we go. Seven of Swords loves to pop up. <laughs> you can't, um, you know, again, just don't get sucked in. <laughs> that's like the best way I can say it. Don't feed this person's ego or this situation. You know, really honor yourself. That is what we've been working on over these past couple weeks is honoring our path, honoring our movement forward and how we're really trying to show up. 
some type of wake up call. Ugh, dude, <laughs> this is not fun. So this goes back to what I was talking about with that need to look a certain way or have things kind of, um, you know, um, ace of cups. Okay, so that need to kind of look a certain way or people to accept us or think certain things about us. There is a wake up call, okay, with that judgment. That really just talks about awareness coming in. Uh, Ace of Cups and the Chariot, which is really powerful. I don't love the, the judgment. I don't know why. I'll clarify for that for us because it does feel like a little bit like a, um, <laughs> we're losing wind in our sails, so to speak. Let's see what that's about. We've been getting this Ace of Cups, new offering, new beginning. Okay, the devil. So this is, again, representative of that shadow side. It's also where people, places, outside situations have really pushed you down, right? I mean, I do believe that what is happening in our external environment is a mirror of what's going on in our internal environment. And not in a way to say shame to anyone or anything. It's just that what we think about ourselves, what we believe, what we think we deserve, etc., is going to manifest in our physical environment. And wh that's where this devil really comes into play. It's places that we allow ourselves to be disempowered by people and situations around us. And that's the wake up call, right? Because I feel like spirit saying like, this is dope. This is dope as fuck. It's like new beginnings, new opportunity. Going back to that heart energy I was talking about, that heart chakra, it's coming through in a really empowered and honoring way. And I think a lot of it is coming down to belief. You have the makeup for this. You are in that chariot energy. You are making headway and from a place of strength and endurance. And it is pushing you towards this new beginning. But I also think there's still this level of recognizing how much we do disempower ourselves, how much we let someone else like control the situation and where those dynamics need to change in our environment, right? Or how much we're like, again, giving our energy to that, meaning thinking about it, talking about it, obsessing about it, you know, whatever, looking through social media. It's that seven of swords energy. And remember, just as much as people are going to spy on you, it kind of goes, but I mean, I don't think, you know, that's all the time, but I, I'm just saying like, if we're investing in that energy towards someone or a situation, it's going to be shown right back to us. But I, I like what your, what your, um, beholding. I like what you have. I like these opportunities coming through. It definitely looks like things are opening up, but we can't, again, um, let the fear, let the anxiety, let the conflicts of the past or needing some type of ego validation stand in our way of inviting this thing in. Spirit's basically saying, like, you know where <laughs> this offer is coming from. So whatever you're going after right now, whether it's relationship, new job, um, family, new child, you know, like whatever you kind of need to do for yourself to educate, to be more aware, to strengthen and empower. This is basically saying you already have like the first steps in front of you. You just need to listen to it and, and continue on and push forward. And that's where our ego can get in the way, where either we don't want to, yeah, we're self-protecting, we're limiting ourselves, we're not allowing that uh, flow to come in to be open to receive. And I think it is coming back a lot to this myth component, some false belief about yourself, about what you can have and what you deserve, and it's rooted in this shadow work, whether this is embodied in your life presently as a person, or this is wounding from your childhood or past karma, habits, patterns, things that just bring us down, that don't give us energy, that don't make us feel excited and passionate about life, or make us feel that like, again, we can't have what we want. That really is BS. 
And again, it's not like we all have to be on this path to change the world. You know, I think that change happens even when we do align, even if it isn't some monumental thing. Maybe, um, you know, your gift to this world is raising some badass children. That is huge. You know, being anyone who's a parent knows how much work, time, and tension goes into that. And that is such a gift to the world. And raising someone who's strong and smart and confident and doesn't try to wage war. I mean, what a gift, right? Like we need more of those types of people. But it's stressful. There's also this fear of success is what I'm hearing, especially with this spiritual seeker card. This is really that anxiety of what if it all works out? Shoot. <laughs> yeah, like what am I going to do with it then? It's going to be dope. You know, I think there's a lot of work in front of you because here's the thing. We started with an eight. We ended with an eight. This is about that opportunity flying in. And this is about having a lot of work on your plate. This is stability and abundance, but it is kind of like taking hold, so to speak, of, um, you, you know, kind of like being able to differentiate between what opportunities you do want to do because you're going to have a lot coming in. Eight of Pentacles is refinement. It is a very abundant uh, energy. I always like it personally. It can be a little bit too much work, so be careful, be mindful of that. Okay, iodine is our first message. It's interesting, you know, especially as we have also gotten the water element. This to me is really about making sure, like an iodine is a very healing element. So uh, it is used in healing, I should say. And it can be healing, obviously. Um, but this is about using that intuitive energy to heal yourself, to find ways to connect with that more feminine energy that we were talking about um, that is connected to our intuition to have that strength to overcome with the fluorine. This is a lot about like not being pushed down, you know, not being weighted down, having that strength to overcome even the most adverse things. I'm not saying it's easy, you know, I'm sending all the love and blessings to whatever you are navigating through because I know it can be really daunting and exhausting and we've been feeling this. I think it's getting a little bit better. I'm feeling that even energetically, it is getting a little bit better, but we have to be really intentional about like where we are putting our time and our energy with this radium. I think this is, I'm going to read that one because, um... It's like, a, this to me feels like what you're dealing with on the outside. I love this book. It's incredibly, like all their work is beautiful and poetic. I always have to look and then I'm like really bad at finding it. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go. Okay. Deep in the Bohemian forests of Europe, uranium's problem simmered in his glowing pitch blonde waist, hidden and evident, vibrant with an unmistakable penetrating violence. Uranium's internal structure, extravagant decay, carried one of the most radioactive substances found in nature, radium. And with radium's havoc, life has buried the keys to its deepest secrets a map of the atom structure. Uranium in his dilapidated, dilapidated state on the forest floor could no longer hide the secret locked inside radium. A ruinous occult priest whose silvery white, soon to be pitch black hands, the cosmic key of the universe lay gleaming. Radium suddenly freed, left the once mighty primordial uranium behind to his decay and entered the closing years of the 19th century, disguised as a charismatic healer with futuristic eerily grow glowing aura. Promising cures and enlightenment, he poisoned our bodies 
and for the price of our soul, he happily unlocked the atom structure, forever disrupting beings' lasting and rhythmic accomplishments. So this really goes back to what I was talking about. Like, to me, these are very much the opposite, right? One is actually bringing in that healing, that intuition, that love, support, nurture, iodine with that divine feminine energy. And radium is those outside sources in your environment that are trying to push away that maybe are really toxic, maybe do have really destructive behavior in your life, causing the conflict, causing the chaos, forcing you to kind of believe these myths, right? And it's all about their ego, right? Their ego to be gratified, to see you push down, um, to not see you succeed. And I feel like you're definitely identifying with this tiger energy of no matter what's weighing you down, no matter how good it looks, how much someone says it's the right way or the right belief, this is about you and your life and rising above and protecting your heart, your mind, your soul, your beliefs through the process. The sun is a great day to, or Sunday is, you know, the day of the sun, obviously a great day to like let our light shine, be um, conscious, be empowered, find energy, find vibrancy, get out, be active, do a yoga, do a meditation, eat some good food that's really healing and nourishing for your body. That is going to help you overcome, you know, whomever, uh-oh, where'd you go? <laughs> whomever, whatever this is playing out in your life. Don't buy into the illusions. Pluto is also going back into Aquarius on the 20th. So this is that time of like, if we trust too much in someone that is shady, you know, it's it's gonna lock us into these this next Pluto cycle, these next 12 or so years, where like we have to almost get away from these people that wanna be put up on these pedestals, that want to dictate and control, that wanna have the upper hand. And that's why we're going through so much reshuffling as a collective energy because it is kind of widening that divide between the people who are doing everything super fast, super quick, you know, get rich quick type vibes, like schemes, too good to be true. They're going to heal you from all of your problems, blah, blah, blah. All of that kind of stuff. There's, you know, it's going to be interesting because I, I think that people will get away with it, right? Um, but I think that there's also going to be more of an awakening in the collective of people who, you know, don't vibe with it, who know it's shady, who know it smells stanky. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. With that being said, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this reading. Thank you so much for your time and energy. Always, it blesses my heart. I'm sending all the love and blessings back your way. I look forward to hearing how this plays out for you. Definitely drop comments below and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>